What's up guys, my name's Dichronic, your host on this Destiny video, in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Necrochasm. If you guys don't know, this is the exotic raid weapon from the Crota Zahard and Raid. I finally got it after my 8th hard mode run, I finally got a Crux of Crota, which is pretty insane because I hear people are just getting it all over the place and it was really not fair. But I finally did get it and I did get to use it a lot and I did get to use it on Arc Burn and all that stuff, so I'll be talking about it in the video. But before I get to the actual review, I just wanted to talk about how you actually get this weapon because there might be people out there wanting to know how to get the necrochasm so basically what you need to do first is get a husk of the pit to do this you have to kill the enemies called sword of crota whether they be out in the wild on a patrol or in a mission as long as you're killing the sword of crota which i recommend just going on the fist of crota on normal just kill him it's he's near the beginning it don't you'll find him sword of crota kill him go back to where keep going back down until he drops the weapon called the husk of the pit once you got the heads to the pit, then you need to kill it like I think five, four hundred a hive with it. It'll, it'll show a bar when you click Y on it. It'll be like a bar that fills up. You gotta kill a lot of hive with it, and then you gotta get an embalming orb to upgrade it to the idol and ally, which can be sold from uh, Eris for I think level three Eris or something. She'll be able to sell it to you, and then you can buy that, upgrade it to idol and ally. Then you have to fully upgrade the weapon with XP until you get to the last upgrade, which requires a Crux of Crota, which you have to get from the hard mode raid on the hard mode Crota raid, so you have to actually kill Crota and they will have a chance of dropping, not a guarantee, and you do not have to grab Glowhu because I did not have Glowhu on any of my times that I, uh, that I have it, uh, and I never had it when I actually did get it, so that's just a myth and I don't worry about that. But anyways, once you do get it, one thing I wanted to mention is that you do not have to re-upgrade the Necrochasm. Right when I got the Necrochasm, it was fully upgraded just like the add-on ally, so you did not have to upgrade it a third time, uh, which is actually pretty cool. So without further ado, let's get into the upgrades that the Necrochasm has. First and foremost, the melee kills increase the reload speed for a short time. This is supposed to be the special upgrade on it. I don't really get why it's here, but basically if you see a Thrall punch him, you'll get a spe uh, speed reload for like 3 seconds or something. It has arc damage with 339 attack, which is uh, pretty cool. The first upgrade uh, is actually one of my recommended ones. It has a lot of impact, a lot of range, but the problem with this weapon is the stability on it. It's just so, so bad. Uh, that's why I like uh, rolling with the second upgrade, because it really, really helps with the stability. The second upgrade really just, it just, the last upgrade is just kind of good, but in, in all actuality, it, it's all about just getting the right amount of stability and being able to uh, actually control the weapon, because this weapon is really, really difficult to actually control, uh, which is why I recommend either the first or second upgrade, and that's the, the ones either having the maximum damage or having the maximum stability, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. After using it a lot, I actually started using the first upgrade because I, I got used to the actual thing. The first upgrade, the upgrade that's really cool about this weapon, Curse Breaker, Precision Kills actually have a chance of frequently causing a Curse Thrall explosion. From my experience, that's every like two out of three enemies that you get a Precision Kill or three out of four enemies. It's very, very frequent. You do not have to worry about it not happening. So basically, uh, most of the enemies you kill with, with a Precision Headshot, you'll actually get the kill on it. As far as these upgrades go, none of these first two on the second ladder are worth it. Do not worry about this one. The last one is where it's at. It gives you such a, a big stability upgrade. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just take off all the stability upgrades. Like, put on a different upgrade here, and if you select the first upgrade, you'll just see the stability just be like at half of what it was. And it's just so so difficult to control this weapon. If you tried firing it without the with the blind fire, you'll have no success whatsoever. So I definitely recommend using stability. And of course, the last upgrade, which is actually one of my favorite upgrades after seeing exactly how good it is, is range fire. When you're aiming this weapon, its effectiveness over range is much, much increased, basically making it so it's a lot more accurate when you're firing. I actually have an example I can show you right here, where I basically fired at a wall with just a holding the trigger. It just goes up in this like straight path into the uh, upwards. Whereas if you're uh, blind firing or you're holding on the trigger, it actually goes really, really much fire. You do not need to see boxes or a measuring tape or however much it is. Very, very clear when you're uh, when you're not aiming down sights. It is very much uh, much harder to keep control. Of course, the second one where I was actually showing you where. It, where I was trying to control it so if I were trying to get like a headshot and I was actually uh, holding down on the analog stick I was actually able to keep it in this like one little spot but if I did blind fire it and try to control it it was so so difficult it just gives this giant path basically like a shotgun spread of all the shots that just go everywhere so if you guys are going to be using this weapon aim down sights there's basically no reason to blind fire this weapon because it's so so hard to control with all the bullets going down range at such a high fire rate. Overall I'd like to say this weapon is kind of average for being the like Vex Mytho class or the weapon that everybody wants to get that's so difficult to get, I'd say that this weapon is really not worth your time on getting. Uh, but uh, in a sense of just comparing it to other weapons, I'd say it's an average weapon, maybe a bit above average if using a certain scenario. For example, if you're at close range 
and you're fighting uh, people with arc shields or something, then it's actually pretty good. And with the arc burn on, I don't know what happens when there's arc burn. It just adds such a, like a uh, an amount of damage to your weapon and such a, has a, such a high fire rate. It actually does really, really well in arc burn. So if you are uh, having a an arc burn, uh, you know, nightfall strike or weekly strike, make sure you put this on because it is actually really, really good for it. And I don't have any gameplay of it right now, but it was really, really good. As far as the cursed thrall explosions, again, it happens very, very often. As long as you're getting those headshots, it happens every like two out of three or maybe three out of four times. So it pretty much happens all the time almost every single enemy you do get a precision kill and one thing I did test is that if you do get hit by the uh, the uh, the cursed thrall explosion that you ca you cause you actually do not take damage because I, I actually get hit by the cursed thrall explosion while I was regenerating health and I did not stop regenerating health so that's just a uh, ergo it is it is a fact you do not get hurt by your own cursed thrall explosions uh, one thing I wanted to mention is it does have 339 attacks as opposed to 331 where the other ones are. Uh, compared to the Vex who had like 23 more attacks uh, from 300 than the other ones, it's really not much more of an upgrade. Maybe it is a little bit better on level 33s versus the 331s who are really good against level 32s. I don't know why this weapon has such a small amount. It's just not that good of a weapon and either it needs some type of buff or some type of way to make the stability go down or something to make it better, but this is not a great and amazing weapon. I out of the, uh, if I would have to rate it among the other weapons, I'd say it's a 7 out of 10, maybe an 8 out of 10, just for the fact that it is it is a decent weapon. It's not a bad weapon in any sense, but it's just not worth the time to be able to get it from the getting the Crux of Crota, fully upgrading it, getting that Husk of the Pit, is really not worth the time that you, you put into it. But if you are going to be going for it, uh, might as well pop it on, get some experience for it, put it in for uh, some bounties if you ever have some uh, weapon experience you want to put on it. And if you are doing the hard mode raid, just get stuff and you get a Crux of Crota. Sure, pop it on. It is a decent weapon, but it is, it's just nothing. Not It's not what it all is chuffed up to be. But anyways, that's the video for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the Necrochasm. I know a lot of people hate this weapon. I think it's a really, really bad weapon. I think it's just a reflection on how long it does take to get this weapon. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think of it, what you think uh, people should do into, or uh, Bungie should do to improve it if you don't think it's good enough. And I want to I want to see something that like you actually think, not just say, hey, it could add more damage. A lot of things you could just add more damage. Maybe there's something special or specific about this weapon that you could do to it to make it a lot better. You know, like for example, the last word. I I thought if, it would just make it so much more of a fun weapon if you were to just uh, add the reload time and make it so actually you can really, really fast reload. Uh, but anyways, that's the video for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did like it, make sure you leave a like down below and show me some, some support on this series. It does take a lot of time to actually upgrade these weapons, find a lot of these weapons. And for fuck's sake, it took me eight hard mode crota rates to actually get this thing. Uh, so I'm so happy I finally did get it. But anyways, that's the video for you guys today. And I'll see you guys on the next one.